Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel again this week and we've got the new daily races that are taking place for you for this next seven days. First up, we have a daily race A race for you, which is insane. You need to make sure you watch this all the way through. Incredible racing. We're starting from P11. We've got Tijani behind us, Quentin in front of us. If you haven't already checked out Tijani's channel, make sure you check that out as well, people. So yeah. Starting from last, we're racing at Lake Azure Center in the Megan. It's the FF car. Now, there is only a one car that's not using the Megan. That is Quentin on the right side there with the RCZ. Now, the Megan is the OP car by the looks of things at this track. Starting the race there, we're up into P9, I think we are there. We've got Quentin on our outside, breaking down to third gear, trying to take a nice clean line through here. We're going to have to give Quentin space on the outside there. So we're side by side, some really nice clean racing going on already in this daily race. Eh? We've got Tijani right behind Quentin also. We're going to go through and we're going to give Quentin a lot of space. So we're going to give him enough space to go through there. We managed to get through and just about make it through without hitting that other McGann there. And still we're in P8. We've got Quentin still on our outside there. This has been a whole lap of him on the outside. And as we come through, he's on the outside there. We then go to left, but through here we kind of didn't go completely to the apex. So wasn't sure about that McGann in front. And that gives Quentin... The ability to stay on our right hand side so we're still side by side pretty much a whole lap here of driving side by side we're going to go for a gap there we see an opportunity in between the two mcgans but i braked early decided not to really risk that break early and then try and do a bit of an undercut here and this actually breaks us away from quentin there we actually quite a good decision to go down the inside there and we're now up into P7 pretty much because the guy on our outside is going to lose that. So, yeah, up into P7. Bit of contact between P5 and 6 there. All nearly kicked off there, but luckily both of them stay on the track. However, the other driver is going to absolutely send it up the inside there. Uses a sausage curb, also swipes him. And a little bit of chaos going on here. We've got another driver going wide there. Free wide up ahead of us. We're going to just take a normal line as that Spanish driver gets sent into the wall. And that is our first victim of the wall from this race. Be careful on that corner. You do not want to be on the outside in a two or three wide situation because you will end up in the wall. But we're doing quite well here up into P6. Driving quite well and actually having a really fun race so far. We're only three laps into this race. And this is one of them races where I feel like it could go on for another seven laps. And it'd be really entertaining because... The racing at this track does tend to have quite close racing and the final lap tends to be chaotic because of the nature of the track and the way you go from this really tricky corner into a very tight apex which leads to dive bombs. Everyone sends it up this corner here. So yeah, I quite enjoy this one. This is probably my one of the Lego Maggiore tracks that I actually quite like. So we're up to P6, we're going to follow behind P5 now. Um, get a bit of his slipstream down the straight and then we're going to look for our next braking zone which we're going to break just before the white line now so this is a bit of a track guide breaking just before that white line on the right hand side using the full width of the track down to third gear get the car into the apex here i stay in third gear there because i prefer the way the car accelerates out the corner i wouldn't go down second gear i think third gear is better it reduces that shift in and keeps it smoother through the apex now through here keep the car to the left use all the curve on the left and you're going to aim to go almost straight over the next corner so what you do here is just go straight over that sausage curb and then get the car positioned to the right hand side now you are going to break for i break very early you can break later nearer that third chevron there on the right hand side but i break quite late um, early just to ensure that i get a nice clean entry into this corner now be careful of that sausage curve. You really want to avoid it because it will send your car in the air. So being careful of that and then braking very early. As soon as the car is straightened up almost into the chicane, I brake very early there. Down to second gear. Get the car into the curb there on the left-hand side. And that will widen your line into this corner. Pretty much on the line of that car in the middle. But you're going to find out that found Shelty is about to find the wall because he's been pushed wide there. Into the wall he goes. And we just avoid that and up into P5. And it looks like we're going to take P4 here as we go over the line. 47-2, not an amazing lap. But like I say, we're trying to be cautious on that lap as well as um, gaining positions and being careful of what we're going on in front of us. So, yeah, two victims of that wall so far. And again, you do not want to be on the outside into that final corner if there's a free wide situation going on. So, so we're now side by side with the driver from Germany also in the Megane there. Going through it again, giving him space on the outside so he can take that corner. And we've managed to make that move up into P4. He's going to try and send it wide around the outside. It's very tricky to do that, though. We're going to give him the space, though. But that means we've now got the inside liners. P3 there, losing a bit of pace. And we've right caught up to him there. 
and we decide to send it into apex making sure we hit it and that basically means that the driver behind cannot go for that move up the inside and push us into the wall so we're up to p4 quite a good start to this race a really entertaining race i've really enjoyed this race i have to say only did one attempt and it was so much fun so now we're heading for a possible podium position from the back of the grid we've got two laps to try and do this now the group behind started to fall back a bit however they're going to start catching up as obviously this this lead group is going to start battling and once they start battling the group behind has a bit of chaos kicking off there as two cars collide through there not giving each other enough space and now it's all kicking off we see an opportunity to go up to p3 try and get the car into the apex as the driver in the lead now he's been very dirty all the way through this race pushing his way through at every opportunity not very nice driving to see i have to say p1 he, he's literally pushed his way through at every opportunity and again you're gonna see i think after this corner period he tries to block off another car so we're in p3 we're gonna go to the middle of the track here try and take a tight line here but we can see Look in our mirror, the other driver decides to send ball up the inside. Quite a nice move there. We pushed a little bit wide, but that's all good. But then watch the Spanish driver again. Completely blocks off that other driver. And yeah, not nice to see. But I don't think he, the um, driver from Germany is going to be too happy of that. They go through here. And again, he swipes into the side of the Germany driver. And now this is all just a bit madness as we come through here. And luckily for us, we see an opportunity. We're up the inside. We take that position on the inside. And now we're going to accelerate out the corner. Just look in the mirror behind us at this corner. We've got four or so wide as the Spanish driver, who was driving very dirty all the way through at race, gets pushed into the wall. I don't know if he got pushed into the wall or what. Um, I think he actually... I actually, I think that was a different driver. I think the Spanish driver ended the race in P3. So he lost out a bit there. We end up in P2. Chaos everywhere. Not sure exactly what happened on that final corner, but someone definitely got pushed into the wall. So three victims of the wall, but a really fun Daily Race A to start today's videos. We're now going to go over to Daily Race C, which is the longest race of the day. And it's driving in the Group 2 cars at Sardegna B. It looks like it's going to be the Nissan GTR, pretty much used by the majority of people. I do think that the Lexus can compete here. Also, probably the NSX. If actually the NSX will probably be all right here because Tyre isn't that much of a factor. If I'm brutally honest, I think you can um, probably get away with doing six laps and then eight laps on the softs with the NSX. But yeah, let's start this race. Both tires need to be used, mediums and soft tires. Um, we're starting from P17. Let's see what we can do in this race. So first lap, just trying to keep it nice and clean as we come through turn one. Expecting a bit of chaos here. One car nearly goes off, but everyone seems to have got through turn one fairly clean. It looks like no real major incidents as we come through here. Have a little look up the inside there. We're not going to go for that move. It would be a little bit too risky to send it up the inside there. But we're going to just stay behind him here. Just maintaining our P17 position. We've got... A lot of drivers are very close for it. As we come through, we've got a yellow flag and we see Momo's. I think it is there. Yeah, Momo's is facing the wrong way. My guess is he got onto the gravel and that's rotated his car and he's just obviously out of the race pretty much there. So not a great start to the race for Momo's. And then we come through in a little bit of carnage kicking off. We've got two cars wide. Um, it looks like maybe a collision between them. We're up to P14. And yeah, we'll take them freebies as we work our way up the hill now. Like I said, we'd only done a, I've only ever driven a couple of laps here. We did about two time trial laps on my main account, two or three time trial laps um, before we went into this. And that is the only time I've ever driven this combination in Group 2. It's a very, I don't think it's ever been used before. But as we come down straight, we've got a penalty up ahead and another penalty for the Spanish driver in front of us. So we're going to try and go for a move on this driver in front of us. We're going to go to right and then send it up the inside. Nice easy move now into the apex and we've made that position as we got two more cars off track there Going into the gravel looks like there's been a bit of an incident between them two and we're now up to p11 So yeah, just taking advantages of The easy overtakes when people are making mistakes trying to keep it smooth We're not like I saying we're not very fast at this combination as we skip through to lap four now so We're getting a little bit closer to p10 and p9 there as they're battling away into this very tricky right hand corner and yeah It's a combination where I think if you keep it smooth, keep it on the track and don't get penalties, you will likely get a reasonable result because it's very easy to make a mistake at this track. Um, there's a couple of corners that can really catch you out. So, for example, this final corner here, very easy to pick up a penalty by running a little bit too far wide there. 
So try and be careful on the exit there as that driver shows you what we mean there. He runs a bit too far wide. Not sure if he's going to pick up a penalty for that, but he's lost a lot of um, time in the race also. So we're up to P10. We've got another Spanish driver behind us there who's on a, um, starting from the back, similar to what we are. He's pushing us quite hard here. We're thinking about a pit stop now. I think you can pit lap four. I reckon that pit, lap four is possible, lap five and lap six. I think they're the three peak lap times for pitting. I don't recommend going to lap seven because I think the soft tyres will easily do eight laps. I don't think that's a problem for the soft tyres in this race. So yeah, probably lap four, five or six is the optimal range of your pit stop. So at this stage, I'm thinking now, looking at the tyre wear, this is where I was looking at it and I was thinking, I think we can pit because we've not got massive wear. It's only on time six and it's not a particularly long daily race. It's only around 17 minutes long. It's about two minutes shorter than your average daily race C. So coming through here, trying to stay behind. We get a little nudge from behind there, but we're just trying to stay close as we can to this driver in P9 and again through there being very cautious not to run wide onto the grass and being very cautious in this final corner just making sure we don't pick up a penalty and we're going to pit this lap and get the tyre change and put the soft tyres on so straight away onto the soft tyres fast forward that pit entry as we don't really want to watch that and yeah we've come out in nice clean air so yeah we'll skip on to the end of that out lap and we're going to come through to the final corner and as we come down here we've got more cars into the pits there up ahead so we're going to gain a few positions from them pitting so that's going to put us up to p10 i think it is as we go down the start line so yeah we're up to p10 again and we've obviously got cars in front of us that still need to pit we've got a car just in front of us there i think who's just come out of the pits i'm not sure whether he's on the soft or the medium now this is the thing i wasn't really paying attention to what tires people were coming out of the pits on because i was just trying to concentrate on keeping the car on the track like i say i like the, the track layout is good i'm not particularly great at it but we hadn't really well we've never driven group two here as far as i remember i've never driven it anyway so yeah just trying to keep smooth as we can as we fast forward that lap and we made a bit of an error on that lap so we're going to use this next lap as a guide now obviously the tires are a little bit more warm for this next lap it was a really poor lap on our first lap on the soft tires we break too late into turn one so turn one braking just before the 100 board there you can see on the brakes just enough early enough so you can get down to second gear and get the car into the apex and then get on the throttle very early early upshift to third gear as well just to keep the momentum out of the corner and then completely flat all the way through this section as long as you get the angles right you should easily be able to do that flat now braking just as the red and the gray barrier on the right hand side there that's where i use as a brake reference and then down to second gear on the power nice and early using third gear there and then into the next braking zone, which I just pretty much, there is no real braking um, reference. So I just use it as soon as the car's over to the full width of the track, I start braking, making sure that you're earlier than rather than later because you want to clip the apex nice and early there and then power your way on this downhill section, which is completely flat out. And then you're going to be looking out for the 100 board for your next braking point. You're going to see it there on the right there. I brake just before that 100 board. Again, a little bit early is better than late for this corner. So nice and early down second gate on the power as early as you can on the exit of that corner use some of the width for the truck there and again use the full width here and i'm going to use that little bit of barrier where it sticks out as a brake reference so what you can see is now we go forward to the point we're on the brakes pretty much dead on where that barrier is there where it sticks out a bit so that's my brake reference for that corner down second gear power your way out and then work your way up this hill and again this can be done completely flat but what you see is i just give it a little safety lift because i'm being ultra cautious in this race and again nice and early on the brakes for this again there's no real ma massive like brake mark that i just like to brake early for it as early as you can to avoid running wide through that corner i think p9 actually ran wide there so yeah try and keep it nice and smooth on the exit of that corner and over the line not a great lap a 111.9 um i'm sure we could go a lot faster than that but it'll give you a bit of a reference for your laps when you're racing so now we're behind another driver i'm not sure if he's just come out of the pits on mediums or if he's had a penalty but he does seem a little bit slow so as we come through here we go to go on the outside there so we see how slow he was and we decide we're going to send it up the inside down to second gear we take that apex and we're up into p8 in this race so up into p8 we've got a lot of cars in front of us as well so this race is actually looking like it's going to get quite exciting towards the end you can see p7 running off there into the gravel that's going to lose him a bit of time so we're going to skip a little bit further ahead and we've managed to catch up to p7 there and we've got absolute like this is craziness on the last few laps here we've got p7 
P2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all pretty much within a second of each other. Absolutely. I'm actually really happy with this week's races, I have to say. Willow Springs, I think, has potential to be actually okay if you get some good racing there. It's not my favourite track. But this combination, never used before, actually looks like it's a fun race. Um, you're going to have a lot of good racing as we decide to follow the Spanish driver who then punts that driver off almost there on the outside, gives him a little nudge. And we decide to break nice and early, make sure that we get the apex here, and the Spanish driver just runs off wide anyway, and we take that position. So up into P6 now, and we're closing in on P5. This is going to be an interesting end to the race. Can we manage to get a podium? Uh, a podium would be amazing. Top five was the aim, um, to be brutally honest, even if I, I was going to be really happy with a top five because... Like I say, we haven't practiced this track and it's not a track we've really raced that much. I think you can tell that it's a track that's not been used very much by the amount of mistakes you're seeing from people and little errors here and there. It's because it's not really used that much. So um, it's quite interesting. I like it. A, a bit of variety in these races. It's good to see. And it's definitely a fun race. There's strategy in it. Um, the medium soft tyres, whether you start on the medium, start on soft. Mediums don't seem to be that slow round here as well. They're not a massive difference compared to some other tracks because there's not that many corners on this track. It's quite a short track. So quite an interesting one this week with it being a shorter track at a shorter amount of laps as well. It's not a particularly long race. So coming through here, we've got a driver going off there. That's going to slow down P5 as we go into the apex. Hopefully it won't slow him down too much because we've got the driver... Um, the Spanish driver that was on the same strategy as us starting from the back is catching us up now. He's on one lap fresher tyres. He pitted a lap later than me and he's now in our slipstream as we've managed to gain a position there where our driver's completely binned it in the wall. Um, very easy to do at this track. Like I say, once you get a corner wrong, you know about it. So this driver ahead, thank you very much, whoever that is. It lets me through on the inside there. He's just letting us go down the left-hand side. He's indicated to say go down the inside. So... Thank you very much for not fighting that one. But yeah, we'll take that up into P4 now and trying to keep the car as smooth as possible as the tire wear is starting to kick in. You can see that the tire wear on the telemetry is starting to affect the way the car's handling now. All we've got to do is try and stay ahead of that Spanish driver. Obviously, he's got a fresher set of tires on there and he's managed to get past P5 there and he's now up to P5 and we're now going to try and chase down this group in front of us. However... We've only got one more lap, so a podium is probably looking very unlikely in this race as we go through this very tricky section here, especially when the tyres are going. Very tricky getting on the power. You've got to be very careful. Again, through here, we hit that curve a little bit too aggressively, and now we're working our way up the hill. A little lift off the throttle and then powering our way out, and then into this final corner. We're going to have to try and hit this corner perfectly because... We need to get that gap up. And we actually nailed that corner there. Um, well, I say nailed. We did it pretty decent. And we've managed to keep that gap around 5, 10. So that is a big enough gap to protect our lead into turn 1. So we're going to be able to hold on to P4 before we get to the braking zone. Um, which we do. And now trying to be smooth. Early upshift into third gear there. Just to try and keep the momentum as the rear tyres are starting to fade. Upshift to fourth. And then try and keep it nice and smooth through that corner and then into the braking zone again. He's getting very close behind us. We've got to kind of drive defensive but concentrating on our exit speed. So again, going quite wide here, keeping the car nice and smooth. Early upshift to third gear, get on the power as early as we can. Try and get a good solid exit and now working our way down into the next braking zone, which we're going to make sure we go defensive for here. So we're going to put the car into the middle of the track. He's going to go to the left, and then we're going to break as late as we can. He braked early, thinking we were going to break later than what we should. We managed to get that pretty much spot on, hold the inside line, and now we've managed to defend that quite well. Up the hill, he's not going to be able to get his car up the inside here. As P3 on the final lap, that is another big F in the chat from... <laughs> We want to see a big F in the chat for that one because he's just lost that podium position. And yeah, he's now down to God knows where. So we're managing to take a podium in this race from the back of the grid. Quite a fun race there. I enjoyed that one. And yeah, two very enjoyable races so far that we've had this week. Now, we're going to move on to Daily Race B, which is at Willow Springs. And um, it's in Group 3. I'm de I decided to use the F21. I actually set a lap time. Now... I expected the lap time that I set. I only did it within about three or four laps. I expected the lap to start me like P4 or 5. Unfortunately, it started us on P1. So 
it's going to possibly make this race a little less entertaining, um, depending on how fast the cars are behind us. Now, the GTR seems like the fastest car around here from the time trial leaderboard. Um, there might be other cars that can compete, though. But I decided to use the FT1 because I like the FT1. So starting the race from P1, see if we can hold on to the lead. So going through into Turn 1, trying to make sure that we get a nice smooth run through this first corner just so that we don't get um, the GTR too close to us in the slipstream zone and as we come through you can see straight away we've almost broke the slipstream already we're up to seven temps and then as we come through here we're on seven temps seven yet yeah, we've broke the slipstream already so unfortunately it wasn't going to be a very exciting race so what we're going to do for this is we're just going to go straight into the track guide as soon as we can we're going to go and give you some pointers on the braking references for this track now I think this race has got potential, um, maybe we'll try and do one or so of these races on the stream later, I don't know, we might do Daily Race A though, because Daily Race A has been really entertaining, and Daily Race C obviously. So this is the track guide, we're going to start our lap, this was our fastest lap of the race on lap 3, going into the braking zone, you see we've built up a 1.6 lead already, and braking just after the 100 board on the right hand side, you'll see it there, just after that 100 board you want to get on the brakes, and let the car rotate into the corner, down to 4th gear, skim that kerb, and back on the throttle as early as you can. Now into this corner, you don't really want to use the brake. Don't touch the brake. Just let the car roll through this corner, downshift the fourth as we go through the middle part, and then use the acceleration to try and get the car rotated through the corner. And then into your next braking reference, which is just before that 50 board. You want to be quite a bit before the 50 board, actually. If you brake too close to that 50 board, you're going to understeer wide and miss the apex of this corner. So down to the third gear, clip that kerb, and for this corner, a little dab of the brakes. And then as you come through the corner, downshift the second gear and let the car coast through the corner. Just off the throttle completely. Let it coast. Back on the throttle. The car will rotate really nicely for you when you do that. Up into fourth gear here. And as we hit that curb, we're going to just dab the brake and go down to third gear and let the car rotate into that curb, powering our way through this section of track. And now we're coming up to one of the trickier corners on this track. This is completely flat out. But the final corner is always a tricky corner to get exactly right. I'm a bit of a wuss at it. I did, on this go, we didn't really push it. We just tried to take it nice and easy. So as we come through here, you're going to break just past 150 board. You can see just getting on the brakes there just after the 150 board and down to fifth gear. Try and keep it as close to the apex as possible and then on the throttle nice and early and use the full width for the track and then power your way down to the finishing line. I think we go over the line on a 1 minute 11.0. Like I say, it's not an amazing lap. But it will do for a quick track guide just to help you lot out. We managed to win that race by, I think, nearly three seconds. So quite a comfortable win in the end. Um, just a shame that we didn't start a little bit further back. So we could have had a bit of battling. But yeah, I'm sure there'll be some good racing there this week. But yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you thought about that Daily Race A and Daily Race C. Really enjoyable races, in my opinion. And I'm sure we'll be having a lot of fun streams throughout the remainder of this week. So yeah, make sure you subscribe, people, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone.